Hey, this is Stephen Whitesides with Greenbrier Music enjoying a new drum line for us. This is Drumcraft. I thought it was time for a lot of fun new things. You'll notice I chopped my hair off. I uh, just was looking for something new and fun to do. These are really cool North American shells here, uh, North American maple. They also do a Siberian birch. Uh, we don't have that in stock just yet, but the North American maple I figured would be the popular thing anyway. Birch runs back and forth and trends for recordings, but uh, maple is just a great all-around drum set. You can get a lot of warmth out of these shells, but they have a very short sustain, probably because they're a, a thin six-ply. Uh, I've commented that Ludwig Classic Maple and a few other uh, series that we shoot a lot of videos on, anything thin six-ply maple is typically you know, short sustain. You get a lot of tone out of them. You get a really clear note out of these, as opposed to a boxy, flat, low sound that you can get out of other stuff, like uh, Pearl and Tama are known for that... Uh, you know, the low end kind of dry sounding rock and roll stuff. Uh, these are great more from a metal perspective in my opinion. Uh, we're harder rock where you want a lot of articulation out of your toms. Lots of fast notes and you want to be able to tell where each note falls, show off your articulation skills, and not have them all get kind of muddied together. It's really difficult to pull those out. It's much easier to record on a kit like this and let the sound guy worry about you know, making the drums sound robust. Easy to add that, very difficult to take away. Uh, these are also very price efficient drums. You get some values on here like the, the bass drum lug casings are amazing looking. The tom mounting system is quite unique actually. Um, it feels loose to play on, kind of like anybody's vibraband, but the toms just uh, feel like they're, they're more robustly positioned, so they're not wiggling all over the place. They just feel a little more loose to play on. I don't know how to say that any more clearly. Uh, I like the double tom stand option here. I'm using a uh, cymbal stand and a uh, tom stand out of this, but uh, you could do a lot with it, and there's a socket on the back. I could put another crash right up here off of this stand. Uh, this is a Series 6 stand. This is all Series 8 stuff. Uh, I'm also using a Series 8 double bass pedal. Great for a very heavy-footed player. If you're a heavier guy, you'd probably be in love with this thing. Because of the way it slams, the way it articulates, it's a very loud bass drum pedal because it forces you to really play into the bass drum. Um, we'll do another video on that later because I want to talk about how you set the pedal up. Uh, it doesn't come out of the box like ready to play on like some of the direct drive stuff, you know, the, the Pearl Demon Drive or the uh, Tama Speed Cobra, some of those, the Gibraltar uh, 9000 series. But uh, this is more like a DW9000 that comes disassembled in the box, but for the price, if you're willing to learn about how to set up a bass pedal, you should be doing that with your DW9000 if you buy that anyway. You can get a very similar value out of the Series 8 double kick pedal. Uh, so enough about that. Uh, what we just showed you in the first half of the video is what the drums sound like if you play at a live gig. You're going to have a sound guy, and that's what the drums are going to sound like from inside the kit at your monitor and outside the kit uh, if you're in the audience. Now we're going to show you what the kit would sound like if you were standing 20 feet away from me in a garage. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut down to just two Shure SM81 overheads. We're going to flatten the EQ and we're going to leave the kick mic on and we'll see how that sounds. Enjoy. <laughs> 